Good evening. Welcome to this forum for the Portage County Supervisors for Districts 13 and 19. My name is Sue Buck and I'm a member of the League of Women Voters of the Stevens Point area and I will serve as moderator for this forum. The county supervisors are responsible for the leadership and coordination of the work of the Portage County government, providing services to the more than 71,000 residents and the 27 municipalities of the county. These services include highway, parks and trail systems, and protecting the public through the public safety departments. The county also provides services to children, elderly, and disabled citizens through the Health and Human Services Department, the Aging and Disability Resource Center, uh, and the Division of Public Health. It is the mission of Portage County government to enhance the quality of life for all its residents by providing fiscally responsible services that enable citizens to build productive communities, families, and lives. The 2018 budget for Portage County is $103,874,702. We can't forget the $2. The Portage County Board meets the third Tuesdays of the month at 5 p.m. County committees meet throughout the month. There are 42 county-related committees. The County Board of Supervisors are elected every year, every two years, on even years and serve a two-year term starting in April. County supervisors receive a $55 per diem plus mileage of 54 and a half cents for county board meetings they attend. Supervisors receive a $50 per diem plus mileage for attending committee meetings with a maximum of two meeting per diems per day. Committee chairs receive a $55 per diem and mileage for attending committee meetings. We appreciate the candidates running for District 13 and for District 19 participating this evening. The candidates for District 13 are Don Jankowski and James Carpenter, and candidates for District 19 are Dale O'Brien and Melinda Osterberg. We were planning to also host the candidates for District 20, Charles Gussell and Ron Becker. Unfortunately, their plans have changed and they are not able to be with us this evening. In order to provide the most time to hear from the candidates and to provide a fair and equal opportunity to answer questions important to you and this community, I will review the format and times and terms for this forum. And they've already, uh, these also have been reviewed with the candidates. Each candidate will ha first have two minutes to introduce themselves and make an opening statement. They will have two minutes to respond to the questions. And I will repeat the question if you need me to do so. Candidates will first respond to some questions submitted by the League of Women Voters and then questions from the audience. Questions from the audience must address, be addressed to all the candidates. And if you want to submit a com uh, question, please motion to one of the ushers for index cards and pencils. There's one usher there and there's the other usher. Um, the League reserves the right to review and screen questions for relevance and to avoid duplication. In order to, of response to each question will be rotated so that uh, each candidate will be allowed to answer the question first. The order of the opening statements will be chosen by random drawing of the candidates' names. As I've already stated, participating in tonight's forum are James Carpenter, Don Jankowski, Melinda Osterberg, and Dale O'Brien. And we will now start with a two-minute opening statement, and I'm going to... Draw. And our first opening statement will be by Melinda Osterberg. Of course. Thank you all for joining us this evening. Thank you to the League of Women Voters, to Mid-State Technical College for this beautiful room and facility that they're letting us use, and to Sue for moderating. Um, I live with my husband and two children in the town of Plover. I'm a strong believer in community. Um, I am a community planner, and people always ask me, what on earth does that mean? Um, when I talk to little kids, I usually say something, I, I help communities decide what they want to be when they grow up. Um, and that usually kind of helps them get a grasp of what I do. 
Um, so I have my own business, Osterberg Planning, where I help communities decide and um, shape their future. I've been doing some work in Marquette County, the Village of Weston, um, and the School District of West Up Here. That's just this year. So um, I am busy that way. I also believe in serving my community. So if my son are, is involved in something, I'm involved in it. Um, I am secretary of the Plover Whiting PTO. I have been on my town's plan commission in the town of Plover um, since I moved to the town and Portage County about seven years ago. So I really view um, being on the county board as a continuation of my, that service that I'm already providing my community. And um, again, thank you for your time. Our next opening statement will be by Dale O'Brien. Good evening and thank everybody for coming and thank the League of Women Voters. My name is Dale O'Brien. I have a wife of 32 years, her name is Lori. I have a son, Lance, and Lance is married to Beth, and they have a 15-month-old granddaughter. And my daughter, Andrea, lives in Madison with her husband, and they have a 16-day-old granddaughter. <laughs> I am a lifelong resident of Pulver, Portage County. I'm a farmer. And in my spare time, when I was not going to high school, I was pumping gas in my dad's gas station. That was back when it was a full-time gas station. I have uh, served 17 years on the Town of Plover Board as a supervisor, 14 years on the County Board as supervisor. I spent 12 years on the Airport Board, four years, which I was chair, and that was going on through the remodelization of the terminal. Uh, I got 14 years on the Ag and Extension Committee, six years being a chair, 12 years on the Ag and Extension, or Land and Water, and on, uh, 12 years on the emergency, Public Safety Emergency Government Management. Uh, so far, I worked on the 20 farm, 2014 Farm Technology Days. That was a big party they had out here on R. I was a very much a strong leader in getting that all going. Uh, uh, we're right now setting up a committee, the Land and Water, Ag and Extension, and Planning and Zoning Committees, and we're going to work on a county-wide project to see what we can do to reduce nitrates in our groundwater. Uh, big priorities are health care center and uh, the courthouse and jail. I'm a SPASH graduate, and I went to UW-Madison, and my question is, what can I do to help? Thank you very much. And our next opening statement is by James Carpenter. Good evening, and thanks to everyone who's here and to the League of Women Voters for, uh, for hosting this forum. My name is Jim Carpenter. Uh, I'm a candidate for county supervisor from District 13. Uh, I'm an educator and a musician. I've taught in the public schools and in higher education. Uh, and I've also worked uh, with nonprofit performing arts organizations for a number of years. Uh, currently, I'm teaching part time at UW Stevens Point. I'm substitute teaching in the Stevens Point uh, Public School District. Uh, and I know some of you have also seen me as the artistic director and conductor of the Monteverdi Chorale here in Stevens Point. Uh, so, why am I running? Uh, Portage County has gone through some big changes since I moved here 21 years ago to the village of Clover, uh, and that pace of change is not slowing down. Uh, today's announcement about the proposed program changes at the university uh, certainly make that point very clearly. Uh, we have a more diverse population with different needs for public services than we did when I first came here. We have a different economic mix, uh, old industries declining, new ones emerging. We have increasing concerns about the protection and responsible use of natural resources. Uh, again, the recent news uh, about nitrate contamination in our groundwater uh, is really just the latest example. To top it off, uh, we now seem to have a state government that is cutting back on the resources and services uh, that it provides and also making it more difficult for local governments to compensate for that loss. Uh, these changes and the challenges that come with them are not going away. Uh, we can't just keep doing the same things the way we've done them. 
We're going to have to respond to those challenges creatively if we're going to keep our community strong. And to do that, I believe we need new faces, new voices on the county board, new sets of eyes from all different parts of the community looking at the challenges we're facing and working together to find solutions. It would be a privilege for me to be a part of that effort. Thank you. Thank you. And last but not least, Don Jankowski. Thank you again for coming out tonight. Uh, I have been a resident of Portage County since uh, all my life, actually. My wife and I have, uh, since we were married, have lived in the village of Plover uh, since 1971. I worked for 11 years in law enforcement of the city of Stevens Point. I did road patrol traffic safety bureau, which was the school safety cadet program. I have ended up as a detective and I left in 1979 uh, to go to work for Century Insurance. In 1971, I was one of the first uh, individuals licensed by the state as an EMT. We went through a, a detailed training program and I covered that area. At Century, till my retirement, I was a safety consultant for Century. I covered workers' compensation, OSHA compliance, fleet safety, products liability, general liability. I specialize in property safety. Since I have been a county board supervisor, it's since 1995, I have served on the library board, space and properties, served as county safety officer, general judicial committee, HR committee, EMS, and the traffic safety commission, along with the local emergency planning committee. I've been involved since 1995 in all phases of the studies and plans that we've been looking at for the county solution to uh, public safety uh, building and the courthouse. I have attempted to make many committee meetings to hear what to hot topics are on discussion and make myself totally aware of what's going on. I worked very closely with the ambulance service expansion in the spring, actually on April 2nd, we will be putting another ambulance in the village of Pulver. That unit will be servicing the southeastern, western part of the county. I have worked for the betterment of all of Portage County, and I have the expertise and knowledge that I hopefully can give to the county in the future. Thank you. Thank you, and thank you, uh, our four candidates. We will now move into our first question, first league question, and we will begin with James Carpenter. What are the three important issues, three most important issues facing the county, and how would you like to see them addressed? As I mentioned in the, oh, back on here. to begin with, uh, I think there are environmental issues that we really need to, to, to keep our eyes on. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, the groundwater issue is, is very important. Um, obviously, healthy, drink, healthy drinking water is important to all of us. Uh, and finding ways of balancing uh, the needs of agri agriculture, which is a big part of our community, uh, with the recreational uh, and drinking water needs uh, is going to be very important. Uh, we have great scientific uh, expertise in this area at the university, and I think we need to make sure that we're paying attention to, uh, to what science tells us about how best to deal with those issues. Uh, I think the, the uh, Portage County Health Care Center issue uh, is also an important one. Uh, this is an area where our residents have come to expect a certain level of service. It's a very high quality facility, uh, facility right now. Um, the budget issues are getting worse from my understanding. Uh, I think we have to be very careful about turning over uh, public services to private uh, interests. Uh, at this point, I think we need to be taking a really close look at, uh, at how that facility might best be funded. Okay, thank you. Um, Don Joukowsky. I also look at the health care center as a big issue for us. It's something that's been taking a lot of our budget dollars away and it somehow we have to get a control on what's going on there. We do have top quality care and we service the public to the best of our ability. 
I've used that with my family members and I, I know what the uh, desire is to keep that facility going, but we have to come up with a solution that's financially and physically uh, uh, possible. As far as the courthouse, uh, that building is in dire need of repair and up remodel. We need to make some changes. The court system is a nightmare. One of these days, we're going to have something happen there and people are gonna say, why didn't you do something about that before? We've been looking at this since 1995. We need to do some action. Water safety and quality is a very important issue along with other issues that relate to public safety and the, the care of the community. Okay, thank you. Dale O'Brien. There again, I think the healthcare center is a very much needed priority. We need to take care of our very young and we need to take care of our very old. Uh, the courthouse, we are paying right now 35 to $37,000 a month in shipping inmates. I mean, that's a pretty good uh, payment on your loan. And uh, also water quality. I drink the water too, and I'm a farmer and I use nitrates, but I use it very limited and probably less than I should just to make sure that we're not doing nothing wrong. Thank you, and Melinda. I agree with um, the priorities that the other candidates ad identified. Um, I also believe that we need to focus on transparency and accountability in how Portage County government operates, that we are clear and transparent in everything that the county does, um, and that we welcome comments from our residents, and that we have properly prepared meeting agendas that are communicated um, well before the meeting. That seems like pretty basic government function, but it's definitely an area where I've seen that we could use some improvement. Um, nitrates are, of course, a huge issue. I live in the town of Clover. I have high nitrates <coughs> in my well. That was something that was consistently um, an issue for my neighbors, you know, as we try to balance our very productive agricultural lands, but with people needing to have safe drinking water. Um, and I agree with the Portage County Health Care Center. It's only, it's one of two facilities in the county, so that's definitely a service that needs to be provided within Portage County. Um, and we definitely should not be profiting um, from the most vulnerable among us. Thank you. We will start our next question with Don Jankowski. And it, it is, how will you work and collaborate with other supervisors the county executive and city council to move the county forward? I think in the past what I've been doing is trying to keep on top of all the to hot topics and the issues that are in front of all the committees. And, and in many cases, when those committees meet, I try to get there if I, it's pertinent to the information and building myself up. I spend some time meeting with these department heads and the people that are involved in these situations. Uh, you spend a lot of time that's outside the meetings gathering the information. You need to know what's happening. You need to know how the people are responding and what your particular thing will do to the committees that, and people that we approach. We recently went and we'll be going from a uh, coroner to a medical examiner. That took a lot of study and a lot of effort. Something that we need to do and I think it was discussed in many different committees and many different levels. I think it's an appropriate thing, and there's probably other issues that we need to look, look at and address as we go forward. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Dale O'Brien. Through all the years I've been on the county board, I've always had good relationships with all the other supervisors and the county executive, and uh, we just seemed to really work good, and we'd get things done in a timely manner. And uh, again, the medical examiner that Don just mentioned, that was a, a very big job of the Public Safety Committee. Okay. Melinda Osterberg. Um, I, I hate to admit this, I have 15 years in government experience. Um, so I've worked at a multitude of counties um, in Wisconsin and out of the state. So I've seen what works, what doesn't work, what can be improved upon, um, and I, you, really believe I can help Portage County with that knowledge and experience that I have. Um, one of the things that I think was maybe missing from the questions is our towns. 
um, and how we work with the town level of government. And I really believe in the strength of that local government and the relationship that they have with the residents and citizens there. Um, so while I worked in Shawano County, most of the planning projects that I had were driven from the towns. And I believe in that bottom up process um, and that functions the best. There's the most amount of public input um, in the project and I believe that that ensures outcomes that the residents believe in. Thank you. Jim Carpenter. I think uh, certainly communication between all levels of government uh, is something that's going to be really crucial. Uh, I think the bottom up idea is, is an important one. We need to be listening to uh, representatives from our towns, our villages, our cities uh, to make sure that whatever the issue might be, that we're hearing the concerns from all of those, uh, from those different levels to, to look at ways that we can potentially collaborate uh, in coming up with solutions uh, that will work for everyone rather than uh, trying to impose things from the top down. Thank you. Our next question comes from the audience, and I will remind you that um, to submit your questions to our ushers, um, Mary over there, and, and we're over there. <laughs> so um, our next question uh, is, last year, and we will start with Dale O'Brien on this one, last year, 66% of the net new growth value in Portage County was due to new construction in Stevens Point and Plover. The growth in the city of Stevens Point and in Plover allows the county to raise its total levy and return vital program, retain vital programs. What can Portage County government do to support Stevens Point and Plover to facilitate their growth? Well, there again, uh, well. You're on. Plover has been growing very fast. Uh, there's been a lot of new things coming out in Crossroads Commons. I started that project way back when I was on the town board. Uh, I think that's going to continue to grow. And there's going to be another 700 acres developed out that way by the city. Uh, which is good because we need to stop moving out in the country. We need to do more infill and not uh, just progressively move out and expand and annex and move on further and further. Farmland needs to be preserved just a little bit. Okay. Melinda Osterberg. Um, I believe that good government can help attract businesses and residents. Um, so ensuring that our government is running efficiently and that we are a good place to live and work. We can continue um, the good work we've done in the county business park and in, in our TIF tax incremental finance districts. Um, but it's about creating a quality environment. So focusing on the natural environment and preservation of that, looking, um, collaborating with our school district to make sure that we have attractive schools um, that are going to be attractive to businesses and people looking to relocate. Um, so I, I believe just overall being a better community will attract the businesses and residents that we want. Okay, thank you. Jim Carpenter. Yeah, I, I, I'd very much like to second that. I think quality of life issues are, are really important in attracting uh, new businesses and particularly as um, there seems to be now a trend of smaller businesses developing, uh, being driven by a younger generation for whom uh, issues of environmental quality, of parks, of quality of life, in all of those different ways uh, are really critical. And the more that we can do to continue to make the county an attractive place uh, for a younger generation uh, to move, to start businesses, uh, to grow businesses that will uh, you know, then have a, uh, an add-on effect, a, a multiplier effect uh, of keeping our economy strong, um, I think that's certainly something that, as a, as a county government, uh, we can do to keep that, uh, to keep things growing. Okay. And Don Jankowski. We all need to work as a team to get this done. Uh, we've worked closely with the Village of Plover and the City of Stevens Point. The county started the, the, the uh, business park many years ago. That's almost full. 
we're going to have to look at where additional things are going to have to go. Again, the quality of life has been, has been said. We need to work on that. We have enhanced some of the parks. We built uh, some additional lands into the communities for those issues, and those are things that will bring people. Uh, maintaining the parks like Jordan Park out there, uh, things of that nature, to have people have a place to go. So I think we're in the right road. We need to expand it a little bit and continue to go forward. Thank you. Our next question, uh, we will start with uh, Melinda Osterberg. The life report of the United Way says one of the most significant problems in our county is the lack of help available in mental health and substance abuse. With its limited funding, how can the county best address this need for services? Um, I would look to other counties to see what they're doing. Um, we're not the, alone in facing this issue. We have an opioid epidemic, um, and so does this country. So there are good examples that we will have to draw from um, in solving these issues. I know that um, there are grant funds, albeit limited, at the state and federal level. We need to take full advantage of those. In my time as a county planner, I was able to secure enough grant funding so the county never actually had to pay for my position. Um, I was able to have the grants that I obtained cover my salary and benefits during that tenure with Shawano County. So that's very important to me. I have, I believe that we can't um, do this alone and that there are funding resources available to our county and we need to take full advantage of them. Okay, thank you. Jim Carpenter. It's a difficult issue, um, particularly given the, the limited resources that we have right now. Uh, and I think one of the things that uh, that we all need to be doing, and certainly as a as a county board, as um, as those involved in public service, uh, is not only to look to our own resources, uh, but also to make sure that our needs are known, uh, that we are out there you know, working with our state senators, our representatives, uh, making sure that um, that the folks in Madison uh, are aware of what the program, of what the problems are, uh, and that we're working with them, um, again, for, for grant money, but also uh, hopefully to be able to secure more uh, to overall state funding, uh, because these are, I mean, these are problems that cross all sorts of political boundaries. Uh, we're not going to be able to fix them all by ourselves. Um, so I think that, um, that any advocacy efforts that we can take uh, as a county government are also going to be important moving forward. Thank you. Don Jankowski. We definitely need to continue to work in this area. This is a state issue and it's a national issue. Uh, funds have been cut, programs have been cut, and we all need to be working trying to get the best mental health care that we can, but it is a major problem. Years ago, I remember when I first started in law enforcement, we had places to take these people, things to do when they had a problem. We don't have those anymore, so we need to work with the state to come up with programs and see if there's additional funding. Thank you. And Dale O'Brien. Well, Melinda is very right. We need to look at what other counties have been doing and to see if we can't duplicate it so we don't have to reinvent the wheel. And we also have to look at what we've already done and what more can we do. Okay, thank you. Uh, our next question will start with Jim Carpenter. And a difficult decision regarding the future of the Portage County Healthcare Center will soon need to be made. What are the advantages and disadvantages of retaining the facility as a public entity? What factors are most important for you? Well, I think the advantages of maintaining it as a public facility uh, are fairly clear. Uh, a public facility means public control. Uh, it means we are able to uh, manage that facility in the way that best meets the needs of Portage County residents. 
uh, who are using that facility. These are folks who are our, uh, our relatives and our friends uh, who have come to depend on that facility for high quality care. The difficulty obviously is in funding. Um, healthcare funding in general is an extraordinarily complicated business right now. Uh, we're dealing with things like Medicare and Medicaid reimbursements and all of those issues that get very, uh, very twisted up in lots of other issues. Um, so that if we are going to keep it as a, as a public facility, which my inclination is to say, yes, we should do that, uh, we need to find uh, some kind of funding mechanism that is going to make that possible. Um, might there be other models that would work? Um, you know, the first two proposals that came in and were turned down, I think were probably turned down for good reasons. Um, if there's a way of coming up with a public-private partnership that would maintain quality of care, uh, but also uh, provide a degree of financial flexibility, that would be something that we certainly ought to look at. But um, I think it's important that we not uh, allow that facility to become a profit center for uh, some larger organization that doesn't necessarily have the best interests of Portage County and Portage County residents at heart. Thank you. Don Jankowski. As far as this issue goes, there are a lot of advantages and disadvantages, but mainly the control of the facility would be our main advantage for us. We can control its service, we control its conditions. Our disadvantages probably outweigh that really heavy right now. The building needs drastic updates. We're running with a boiler that's uh, being binder twined and every year we go through, will we make it through the season? We need to make some decisions and take some action. The big problem will be, what will those actions do to our budget? Everything that we do there affects the budget. Does that mean that we cut the sheriff's department? Do we cut other departments, highway departments to maintain this? These are gonna be issues that we're gonna to have to really address and weigh in detail. Okay, thank you. Dale O'Brien. I said it before, I'm gonna say it again. We need to take care of our very old and our very young. What my constituents are telling me is we need to have Portage County maintain the health care center. And Portage County can run it cheaper than outsources it. Okay. Melinda. Um, I believe an advantage is that we can guarantee a quality of care at the facility. Um, we can keep a well-regarded facility that's operated by the county. It's got a very good reputation for providing high quality care um, and we can have that care close to us um, and control over that there's only one other facility that provides that sort of care in our county um, without this facility you know people would have to be traveling quite some distance to see loved ones that are in um, that are in need of that care the disadvantage of course is the incredible cost um, it's you know about a thousand dollars per person per month to operate to have them stay at that facility um, so we need to evaluate that um, but a deci decision should have been made and we should have proceeded with that decision a while ago the boiler um, certainly wasn't a surprise I think with proper management and budgeting um, we should have accounted for that probably years ago I know in my home um, I'm planning for a new roof my house is seven years old so I know about how long a roof lasts and I, I would like to see that level of forethought and budgetary management in Portage County government. Thank you. And we will start the next question with Don Jankowski. And the question is, and it's an audience question, and just to remind you, if you have a question, uh, let our ushers know, and they will get a card to you. <clears throat> what has caused the groundwater problem in Portage County, and how do you plan to solve it? That's a real tough question. We have very little control over the amount of water that is out and used out in the county. We can suggest to people to cut down, 
uh, we can try to control things, but there are many wells, and if you go out through the county, you see a lot of those wells out there running to produce a crop that produces a, a product from our area. It in, means employment, and those are questions that we have to address. How do we address that? Well, how do we best do it? I'm not sure what's going to happen in this area, but it's something that we're going to have to look at from a full detailed effect, and how does it affect the production in the county, the health of the county, and the water quality and amount. Thank you. Dale O'Brien. Well, we're gonna have to start to look at what are the causes of nitrates in our water. It just doesn't come from putting fertilizer on your potato field. It comes from septic systems. Homeowners putting 3,000 pounds of fertilizer on the grass just to maintain a decent green grass. And when they turn around and water it in. Well, then when it grows, they got extra grass clippings. So what do they do is they pile it up next to their well. I mean, there's just a lot of education that needs to be bought out here. Organic matter creates nitrates. And these are some of the things that the farmer is getting blamed on, but you know, there's other causes of nitrates, and that's what the county has to look in to see how the county can uh, educate the people and try to tell them, don't do this. This is not the way to do it. You got to do it this way. And I think our problems will disappear. A lot of it was, you know, probably our grandparents' fault because when the corn looked a little yellowish, what did we do? We went and put more nitrogen you know, on there. But actually, it needed more potash. But now we have more testing, the soil test, to tell what we need and how much we need to put on. Thank you. Melinda Osterberg. Um, well, I wish I was George Kraft, but I'm not. Um, however, I can say I would rely on the experts. Um, we have a great resource here at the university. Um, I, would, I know that they have prepared some plans and some analysis of what is causing the nitrate issue. Um, but it's clear that we need to take some action because we do need um, our residents to have ability to drink their well water. That is a huge issue um, in our area. I spoke to an elderly couple last week who are concerned about being able to sell their home knowing that water testing um, may be an issue and they might have to do some nitrate remediation. Okay, that's an awful place to put homeowners in. Um, a lot of times their home is their main asset. Um, so we need to be very cognizant of that and balance that, of course, with our agricultural economy. Thank you. Jim Carpenter. Yes, and I think uh, the issue is, is not just in the area of nitrate contamination, but also uh, in the effects on surface water of uh, high capacity well use. Uh, I know this is something that, again, George Kraft has done great work uh, in terms of documenting uh, those effects, particularly as uh, they affected the Little Clover River, which has gone dry uh, in a number of years, uh, and tying that in these systems are all connected. Uh, so one of the difficulties is, again, it's uh, very difficult to tell exactly where that contamination is, is coming from in the nitrate issue. Uh, it's becoming, I think, a little less difficult uh, to see what the effects of uh, high volume pumping are uh, on surface waters. And again, getting this, this all ties in uh, back to some of the quality of life issues as well as just the public safety issues. Um, recreation, outdoor recreation is a huge part uh, of the appeal of this county. Um, so again, it's all interconnected. And I think we need to, again, depend on the best science that we have available uh, and to work as a county with all of our governmental units and again also making sure that we are making our voices heard as a county in Madison uh, because a lot of the things that we can potentially do uh, to encourage best practices in, in water use as well as potentially uh, to look at permitting issues for new high capacity wells. Uh, as a county we have limited ability to do that uh, but we do have a voice uh, that we can use in concert with other counties, with other municipal governments, uh, hopefully to put some pressure on the folks who do have that power uh, and who can be of, uh, sort of more effective in helping some of those problems get solved. Thank you. <clears throat> Our next question is from the audience, and we will start with Dale O'Brien. 
How do you plan to work with the city to reduce costs of basic services such as fire and ambulance? Well, the ambulances are owned by the county and the city that runs the fire department and the EMS. What we can do to reduce the cost is to merge together and try to do a better job is together. And when I got a picture on my phone from June 12th when we had an ambulance swimming in the Michigan Street underpass, and that cost the county a lot of money to repair transmission and water in the taillights. I mean, there's just stuff like that. There needs to be better training for the ambulance drivers, and just so accidents like that don't happen. Linda Osterberg. Um, yes, I believe training, um, perhaps establishing a minimum level of service for this. I'm a huge fan of benchmarks. So um, one of the issues, of course, is response time. So if we had an, a standard level of service in a maximum response time that we wanted to establish um, as a county that can help dictate cost. Um, oftentimes it's much easier to agree on a basic level of service than it is in a particular dollar amount. Once you agree on that, then the dollars kind of just make sense because you're instituting what you've already agreed upon. Um, and I believe in collaboration, um, both within the county and outside of the county. There are many examples of um, within the state of those services being provided um, by agreement, intergovernmental agreement with adjoining jurisdictions and looking at that as another way to um, have a cost effective provision of services. Thank you. Jim Carpenter. Yes, I, I think the, uh, the coordination aspect is, is probably the most important issue here. Um, making sure that the, uh, the communities that are closest to where services are available uh, are, are collaborating. And again, if that can be done, particularly for those communities that are, uh, that are farthest from the geographical center or from the population center of, of Portage County, uh, you know, might have opportunities of, of working across other boundaries, uh, that that might be helpful as well. And Don Jankowski. Currently, 95% of our ambulance calls are what, in what we call the metro area that covers Amherst, Stevens Point, Plover, and a little bit north of town, but 95% of our calls are from that area. We have contracts with Amherst, and we will have a contract with the village of Plover. Amherst and Plover will be providing an ambulance rig full-time to cover those areas. They will be going to the east to the county line from Amherst to the west to the county line from Plover. Stevens Point will be covering the northern end of the county. We are looking at uh, redoing the d uh, dispatch center call system so that when a call comes in, the appropriate ambulance goes to that call. We have added additional equipment where the dispatcher will know exactly where that ambulance is by GPS. That will be on a screen right in front of them. They will know which ambulance to get to that incident more appropriately. We are collaborating with these other uh, villages and uh, towns to get this service improved. That will be starting April 2nd. That will be giving us a total of seven, six rigs in the county and uh, they will be manned around the clock. Uh, we're going to go and this is our last question and then we'll go into our two minute closing statements. And we will start with Melinda Osterberg. The Alice reports show surprising levels of poverty in Portage County. What programs would you support or propose to address poverty in Portage County? Um, I would s encourage businesses um, to pay living wage jobs. I believe that that is key. Um, so how can you do that? Um, the communities that have established a minimum wage higher than the um, standard um, have not seen any economic downfall from doing so. Um, so that could be one option if there was the political will to do that. Um, I believe that um, education is key. There are definitely some improvements we can make to the Stevens Point Area School District. I hate to say that, but um, you know that we can improve the quality of education our students receive, um, and we can in 
attract other businesses um, that do pay living wage jobs. I believe in strengthening our manufacturing industries. Um, my husband is, he works for the paper industry. Um, those are great jobs. We need more jobs like those. We need to keep that sort of industry here in Wisconsin. Um, so I would definitely be working with the state on how to do so. Jim Carpenter. Yeah, I'm going to agree with a lot of what Melinda said. Um, we have, there are too many people who are working hard and working full time um, and who are not able to support themselves and their families because of the low level of wages. Um, I think, I think we all should recognize that the time has long passed when those minimum wage jobs were just being taken by students uh, who are working part time while they're in high school in order to pay for their gas money or their date money. Uh, there are a lot of folks working those jobs full time trying to support families uh, and I think that we definitely need uh, to be looking at ways of, of raising those wages in recognition of the fact um, that you can't get by on that kind of wage. Uh, education, obviously, is also a critical issue here. Um, you know, I'm, as I said, I'm doing a lot of substitute teaching right now in the Stevens Point District, and I know there are teachers who are working really hard uh, to make sure that their students have the tools that they need uh, to be successful. Uh, to earn uh, a good wage after they graduate, but we need to really make sure that we're continuing to, to support that effort um, as, as funding, again, becomes more and more of an issue. That's something that we're going to need to keep fighting for uh, if we're going to keep um, the level of, um, of economic growth and just, uh, again, of quality of life, not just for what we provide, but for what people are able to do for themselves by earning a wage uh, that allows them uh, to live with dignity and respect. Don Tinkowski. We need to continue to work with the village, the cities, uh, the city and the various other communities to bring more uh, businesses into Portage County that will support these types of jobs. Uh, we're bringing in a lot of uh, retail, but that doesn't always answer the top wage. We need to get some manufacturing. Uh, the city has the land. We need to work with getting more people out there that way, improve that area to bring the uh, dollar wage up for everybody as we best can. And Dale O'Brien. Everybody had a lot of good points on this. Uh, I think the living wage needs to be jacked up a little bit because it's harder and harder to find good people to work for you nowadays. Higher education, there again, if they don't know nothing, how are you going to teach them? Uh, benefits, that would help bring up, you know, quite a bit of a uh, living wage factor. And again, manufacturing is probably the only best place out there to get a job other than, you know, McDonald's where they don't pay nothing anyhow. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you to our four candidates. We now move into the closing statement. And this closing statement is an opportunity for the candidates to comment on topics not covered in the questions. And again, the order will be um, by random drawing. And our first closing statement will be by James Carpenter. I'd like to thank the League of Women Voters uh, again and all of you for, uh, for being here this evening. Um, I'm a political novice. I'll admit that right up front. Uh, I've worked in education all my life. Uh, I've always tried to pay attention to what's going on. Um, but over the last few years, uh, it has become increasingly clear that more of us need to get involved. Um, change happens from the local level. I firmly believe that. Uh, and from having been in this community now for over 20 years, um, seeing some of the, of the good things about this county, seeing how some things seem to be slipping a little bit, and as the changes sort of keep coming over us, uh, that's what has really sort of moved me to saying, okay, 
it's time to, to see if I can get involved in a, in a little bit deeper way. Um, and I think that my experience in different fields, uh, again, particularly educationally, uh, where I see all kinds of different folks from all sorts of different backgrounds, uh, gives me the ability to look at things from different perspectives, uh, to analyze what I see and what I hear. Uh, and I would be very hopeful that I would be able to, uh, to translate that um, into service to the community. So thank you very much. Thank you. Melinda Osterberg. Um, again, thank you for bearing with us as we talk some pretty, about some pretty um, high-level concepts that no one sitting up here is going to be able to tackle alone, um, and maybe even is outside the scope of Portage County. Um, but I can say that as we address those topics and those issues that are so important to us, um, I will always rely on experts in the field. So um, it's, as we, for example, take the healthcare center, I would go to Lincoln County who just approved um, construction of a new facility and find out how they're doing it. Um, I believe that we are not alone in our issues that we're facing, that there are good and bad examples that we can learn from, and I believe in reaching out to those communities um, to find out what they're doing. I believe that together we can make Portage County a great place for us and hopefully a great place for um, our children to live and that we have a community that they decide they want to remain in as they get older. Um, thank you so much again for your time tonight. Drive safe. I believe the storm is coming. Um, and I please, I hope I can count on your support on April 3rd. Thank you. Don Jankowski. Again, thank you very much for allowing us to be here tonight, but it, this comes down to a lot of things. We're gonna see some major changes on the county board this year. We're seeing a lot of people that have left got, got, got. and there will be new people coming on. Uh, we're gonna see some drastic issues. It's gonna be a retraining issue for a lot of people because the topics that we've been talking about over the last several years are fresh on the minds of the people that are there. The new people are going to have to do some awful educating and training to get up to speed with us. But again, I think we can all do it as a group. The issues that we face are drastic. They mean a lot of changes for this facility, for this county. The facilities are in dire need of repair. That includes the health care center. We have to be very careful on how we do these things so that we can do all of them and do best we can to provide the services the county needs. Thank you. And last but not least, Dale O'Brien. Well, thank you everybody for coming, and thank you to League of Women Voters for having us. I want to say that uh, I've been on this for 37 years between the town government and the county government, and I do it as a community service. And my grandpa was on the town board, and my dad was on the village board, and the town board when the village split from the town. And I just want to offer common sense. And the next question I got is, what can I do to help? Thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you to the candidates for the time and energy they've invested in running for the Portage County Board and for participating in this forum. Feel free to stay and talk with your constituents in the hallway <laughs> as we have another forum to follow this one. On April 3rd, Portage County voters will also be voting for several state and local offices, as well as a referendum on the state treasurer's office position. The League of Women Voters has a candidate guide for national stateside elections, which may be found at vote411.org. League contact information, including our website, email, and mailing address is available on the counter over there uh, against that, uh, the north wall. This concludes the forum for the Portage County District 13 and 19 County Supervisors position. Thank you candidates, thank you audience for your participation and attention. We also wish to thank Sarah Thoreau who taped and will replay the forums on Community TV Channel 984. Um, there's information about the times on the side counter as well, but to let you know they'll be replayed Friday, March 9th at 8 p.m. Saturday, March 10th at 1 and 9 p.m., and Monday, March 12th at 5.30 p.m. 
These broadcasts are appreciati an appreciated service to Portage County area citizens. Thank you to all the league members who volunteered to various roles this evening. It wouldn't have happened without all of you. And thank you to the staff at Mid-State Technical College for their assistance in allowing us to use this facility. The league believes that when you vote, you are participating in one of the most basic and important responsibilities you have as a citizen. When you vote, you are empowering your political voice. Please remember to vote on April 3rd. Your vote does count. And now let us show our appreciation to all the candidates.